Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Choosing the Right Personal Training Certification. Uh, my name is Debbie Onoroff with Hofstra Continuing Education. And uh, I'm going to turn the, the presentation right over to Vincent Carbelli. Just bear with us for a moment here. Okay, Vincent, it's all yours. Okay, great. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. I am Vincent Carvelli. I'm the founder and president of the Academy of Applied Personal Training Education. And I'm hoping that you find tonight's uh, webinar informative and maybe guiding you towards the correct avenue for you achieving your own certification and getting started in our industry. So we have a couple of objectives tonight. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the purpose of certification, what the fitness industry's leading organizations suggest relative to certification, how to choose a certification, what to consider when preparing for a certification exam, the different pathways leading to certification, and then a little bit, of course, about AAPT. So with no further ado, I'd like to get started. So let's look at the purpose of certification. There is so many avenues and so many ways to get certified and there are so many certifications out there but at the end of the day what it comes down to is this thing is intended to help industry professionals demonstrate their commitment to professionalism and ethic. Certification quantifies an individual's competency, verifies and validates that a standard of knowledge has been demonstrated through successful completion of the required certification instrument. Verifying professional knowledge in the specialty. So at some point when somebody achieves certification, depending on the organization they received their certification from, there was some form of an assessment that was provided to them, whether it be a multiple choice question exam, um, a essay type multiple choice question exam, or a multiple choice essay question exam along with a practical skill assessment. And by today's standards, there are more certifications now than ever before. And it seems to be that there are more and more popping up. And it can get confusing. Um, a lot of people who interview us, interview the AAPT over at Hofstra and say, why should I take your course? Um, what's different about yours and the others that are out there? And we really don't want to compare ourselves to others and say how we're different because we don't know a whole lot about what the other organizations are teaching and what they're certifying in. But what we do know is what the industry leading agencies are recommending. And we always direct our potential students and potential certificates to this information. So I'm going to share with you some very public information in our industry. And it's provided to us by the International Dance and Exercise Association, known as IDEA, and the International Health and Racket Sports Association, IHRSA. There are two leading organizations, um, one more so on the education side of the fitness industry and being IDEA, IDEA, and one on the business management and health club operations side of the industry, International Health and Racket Sports Association. So since 1982, IDEA, IDEA has provided health and fitness professionals with an unbiased research, educational resources, and industry leadership. The International Health and Racket Sports Club Association is the fitness industry's only global trade association. They represent over 9,000 for-profit health and fitness facilities and over 650 supply companies in 75 countries. So they are kind of the leading resource in our industry for the large, even the not so large organizations. You know, in our area we might think of Equinox, LA Fitness, New York Sports Club, down to our franchise operations, such as retro fitness, et cetera. This is the organization that helps those businesses, whether they be for-profit, franchise, or large corporations held on the public market, maintain productive and ethical business operations. So not long ago, well, not too long ago, actually, relative to our industry, URSA took a position. There were a lot of questions from health club owners saying, 
personal training certifications seem to be popping up left and right. How do we know we're actually acquiring qualified staff? So that's when ERSA took a stance. They took a position and started working with some of the fitness industry's leading personal training certification groups on an initiative to promote safety for consumers working with personal trainers and health clubs. It is a liability. There is risk when a health club hires a trainer and puts them to work with a client or a member, and that trainer doesn't have adequate knowledge, adequate training, be it in theory and practical skill, to monitor and progress a client safely. And with the variance in certifications from a weekend workshop to a home study program, they wanted to ensure that the, the public, the safety of the public was secured and that the club owner and the member wouldn't be faced with a liability. So what they found is one important outcome of the meetings that they had, they had been, had been to determine the value of an independent nationally recognized accreditation for personal training certification programs. As such, our person's board of directors has adopted the following recommendation for the association member clubs, meaning any club, any health club, any organization that provided fitness services and was a member of ERSA, they made the following recommendation. They said, whereas given the increasing importance of personal training in health, fitness, and sports club, ERSA recommends that as early as January 1st, 2006, their member clubs hire personal trainings hold a, personal trainers, sorry, holding at least one current certification from a certifying organization or agency that had begun third-party accreditation of its certification procedures and protocols from an independent, experienced, and nationally recognized accrediting body. The recommendation they made was for these organizations to align with the National Commission for Certifying Agencies, the NCCA. They are an independent agency that evaluates the ethic, the procedures, the policies, the examination instrument, for certification industries to make sure, A, that the exam that they're providing, that they're going to accredit, is legally defensible, that it provides for the assessment or actual validity of the person who is sitting for that examination, and that it qualifies and quantifies the individual's knowledge. URSA at the time, uh, going back to about 2008, is where several personal training groups that have achieved accreditation from an ERSA recognized accrediting body, including, and that was us, the Academy of Applied Personal Training Education. There are 15 NCCA accredited certifications in the country, only 15. AAPT was the first and still the only in New York State. So just by sheer numbers, you can start to begin to understand the value of the NCCA accreditation and the arduous task that it is for a certification organization to achieve that credential. Um, they do their due, due diligence. They, uh, they aren't handing out accreditations, and we work very hard to meet their standards. Their standards are extremely high, they're rigorous, but at the end of the day, when AAPT grants certification to an individual, we're very proud that we're able to provide them with an NCCA accredited certification, and they should be very proud that they earned a, a certification that is actually accredited by the National Commission for Certifying Agencies. Back in August of 2010, um, AAPT was invited out to Los Angeles to the Idea World Fitness Convention. It's the world's largest, most comprehensive, longest running fitness convention, and they recognized the AAPT, the Personal Training Academy of Applied Personal Training Education, as one of the top accredited certification bodies. We were invited to participate in IDEA's Fitness Connect. So what this means is once an individual has achieved certification through the AAPT, they become part of a fitness directory containing more than, actually connecting you with more than 16 million consumers, providing services to people throughout the country. This is a, a big step and a big initiative that IDEA took, trying to boost the personal training the certified, the accredited certified personal trainers business, where they're actually aligning them with consumers, specifically looking for NCCA accredited 
fitness professionals. And not too long ago, um, we started to, IDEA actually started to look at what is it that our health and fitness centers are looking for as far as skills, abilities, and certification uh, from personal trainers. And what they said when they're making decisions on hiring employers, they play, when making the hiring decisions, employers place emphasis on skills, abilities, certification, and personality, with certification as central for determining pay upon hiring. And you might find this interesting when we look at what the industry looks at as far as a credential. Um, so when you look uh, at criterion, if you take a look at personal trainer on the first line here, you see degree. They're looking at 74% of the people polled in the industry are looking for degrees, but 97% of them are looking for certification. Additionally, they're looking for skills and ability. And at 96% looking for skills and ability, what they're saying is we want to hire people who have the skills, both theoretically and practically, being able to provide service to the members as soon as we hire them. Again, once you're hired, they look at, okay, how are we going to pay this individual? What is the criterion used? Again, it comes back down to their certification at 81% over a degree for a personal trainer at 64%, and again, 76% looking at skills and abilities. So this is important. It's important because you as a potential future certified personal trainer know that part of your assessment potentially when getting hired is going to be demonstrating some practical skill, whether it be a fitness assessment or an actual practical skill resistance training exercise. Again, when they look at advancing pay, um, merit pay raise, additionally, they're going to look at the important characteristics here, uh, components. Advanced specialty training stands out. So advancing your education within an organization that you're certified by is also really important. And so before you get into the certification thing, which you know you can acquire or earn just by taking a test, but you need to be able to be prepared for that test. You need to be able to pass a test, some assessment instrument that quantifies your knowledge. And we, we've been at this for a long time. Um, here's an article that came out in 2006. It's in one of our industry publications. And they wrote an article called Back to School. And they titled it, A Growing Number of Universities Are Developing Personal Training Curriculums. They said that the personal training industry is quickly becoming a part of the healthcare mainstream. A number of major universities and other accrediting, accredited learning institutions have recently begun to develop academic-based programs for personal fitness trainers, or for personal fitness professionals. Included are Purdue, Indiana University, and Hofstra. And what they lacked to mention here was that we started this in 1996. Ten years later, the industry catches on to this thing and starts to recognize that organizations are, are taking education, educational organizations and entities and institutions are taking education seriously, recognizing that our profession is growing at a rapid rate. And what we said, our goal back in 96 was to establish a course of study that would exceed industry standards by offering an educational experience that's comprehensive, both practically and theoretic, theoretically and prepares our graduates to enter the personal training field with critical thinking and application skills required to become a driving force in the industry. And we continue to do that today. Um, we've enhanced, we've modified, lengthened our curriculum. We've increased the number of support services we offer people sitting in on a course over at Hofstra University. And we need to do that because as our industry is growing, so is the requirements relative to the knowledge base that a fitness professional should have. Recently in 2012, um, another article came out in Club Industry Magazine saying university degrees and certifications enhance revenue 
potential for personal trainers and improve client safety. They say club operators also can turn to certifying agencies that have been accredited to ensure the certification is properly preparing the trainer and in turn protecting their members. As I indicated to you earlier, this is a big concern in the fitness industry. With the numbers of people acquiring and utilizing the skills of a personal trainer, health clubs are enjoying the benefits of the revenue. They're enjoying the benefits of client retention and member retention. But they're saying statistically we're having more and more people trained and we know that physiologically and orthopedically and biomechanically that things can get a little risky when a person doesn't know what it is that they're doing. If they're just following common and historical uh, trends in, in the industry, um, that, that can be dangerous. So again, they're referring these people saying, hire a trainer that has a certification from the National Commission for Certifying Agencies. They, they again, Club Industry Magazine, are saying this is what the industry is recommending to our health club operators. Accredited organizations that offer personal training certifications, we know again AAPT meets that criteria. And you might have seen this article, and I'm sorry for the scan, but Newsday articles just don't scan so well. Um, but this came out in January, and they titled it Who Trained Your Trainer? And that's really interesting uh, to me and always has been because I find it difficult to understand that one person can be uh, a master at all trades or all skills. And for people who sit in on a course and maybe get a review from one person, one instructor, not ever to minimize the knowledge base of an individual, but there's so much that goes into personal training education, everything from assessment skills to interpersonal skills to biomechanical analysis to the methods and understanding of exercise progression to understanding about pathological symptoms and syndromes, cardiovascular disease, respiratory diseases, uh, orthopedic dysfunction, immune system uh, issues. There's so much that goes into it and the question is who, who is really training our trainers? And in this article, they say that there are only about six widely recognized uh, certifications. I, I think that's a little short, but they do include the American College of Sports Medicine, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, the American Council on Exercise, as well as some university-based personal training programs such as the one at Hofstra. And yes, we are the one at Hofstra. So the word is out that the consumer is going to start taking a better look at who it is they're hiring and kind of starting to get a sense of what the credentials should be of that individual. By today's standards, it's a little bit more than looking the part and acting the part. You actually have to be the part. And when we look at the different pathways to certification, um, there's everything from home study courses, which you kind of order your, your materials online, they arrive at your house, and you start studying. Um, but we found historically that students who do that struggle with studying stuff that they don't understand what it is they're studying. It's difficult to determine what a Latin word means and how it relates to uh, exercise when there's nobody to ask a question. And of course then there are the live courses. And then you have to make a decision about well who's offering that course and what's their background well, who are the instructors? How long have they been doing this? And of course, webinar-based courses. Um, but making the decision and finding the right educational track certification preparation is really based on how you feel, who you are as a learner, your style of learning. Do you learn best visually? Are you a good auditory learner? Or do you prefer a combination of, of this stuff where you need some kinesthetic stimulus, you need some visual stimulus, and you need some auditory stimulus? you have to be able to make that decision. You know, students typically know how they learn best. And what's really important about making decisions is what your time management skills are like. Offering a home study course or doing a webinar-based course requires that you don't get distracted by things that are going on around you at your home and that you have good time management skills that you actually allocate the time to get the work done. And then what's your background? Um, we have many people come through our course who are, are chiropractors, massage therapists, 
physical therapists, and of course, the general public who's looking to enter the personal training field. So the person who has some background might consider a home study program or might consider a webinar-based course. But even at that, if they're not specifically trained in personal training, exercise science, we find them, even with people with a strong anatomy and physiology background, attending our course. And so getting back to that question, what makes an AAPT Hofstra education different? Well, we know what makes it good, and we know what our students over the past 18 or nearly 20 years have asked for. We've met those uh, requests, and we know what they complement us for. Um, so when there's been times that we've had to make some improvements based on student outcomes we have, and we continue to meet that expectation of our students. And so here's what we get. You know, we provide a university-based learning environment. We are, by the way, one of the only certification uh, organizations that requires a prerequisite anatomy course. Um, so we, we do provide that prerequisite anatomy course for the entry-level personal trainer. We offer one hour optional review class. So people taking our course starting the second lecture module can come in one hour early prior to class and meet with our instructor and go over anything specific to the subject matter that that instructor taught the prior mod module. We also offer a certificate of coursework completion, uh, both from AAPT and Hofstra University, for people who meet the attendance requirement. And our attendance requirement provides that you can miss one lab module and two lecture modules. Anything more than that, you're not eligible to receive that certificate of coursework completion. Doesn't mean you can't complete a course, doesn't mean you can't sit for the certification exam, but for those willing, to, I'm sorry, those wanting to earn a certificate from both Hofstra University and the AAPT in coursework completion, uh, we do have an attendance requirement. At the end of the course, we do provide you with a three-hour comprehensive course review, which goes through the critical domains of the coursework that are assessed in your examination instrument, which a lot of our students find real helpful. We do provide 18 hours of lab science, which is hands-on training in a gym setting. We have industry-recognized subject matter experts providing the course modules. And we provide this at a nationally recognized institution of education. And of course, you have an industry recognized nationally accredited NCCA credentialing. So in totality, you're kind of leaving this um, with successful completion with a really strong foundation to enter the field. And we take pride in merging the academic theory and practical application into uh, one unit. So where we can take that book work and take it into the facility and actually present it in a way that makes sense. Take it from theory and bring it right into practical application. We spend quite a bit of time in the gym going over skill, teaching methods, and of course the biomechanical analysis of what makes an exercise efficient, safe, and effective. And what we really enjoy doing is kind of beating up the historical continuity of information that lives out there and continues to um, contaminate uh, the personal training field on, on how an exercise should be done, where it should be done, at what intensity it should be done, and some of the misconceptions about why it's even being done. So there's a lot of demonstration, a lot of explanation, a lot of question and answer time. We teach you guys the, uh, everything from body composition assessment to blood pressure assessments, heart rate assessments, to actual hands-on practical skill for exercise biomechanical training. Yep. Now relative to the course and the exam, um, our prerequisite anatomy course runs two evenings and one full day. This course is specifically geared towards introducing the skeletal and muscular system to you in a way that's really user-friendly, um, that prepares you to enter the course 
with an understanding of some of the terminology, um, the landmarks that are required for you to have a comprehensive experience with the biomechanical side of the course when we start talking about muscles and joints and how they function. So this course really sets it up, sets up a nice introduction to progressing your learning when we get into that particular module of biomechanics. And then this is an overview of each subject matter that we cover. And you see that there are 12 modules. The 12th one is the course summary review. But we go through client assessment, introduction to exercise biomechanics. We talk about stretching and joint range of motion, um, physiology of human performance, how the body actually produces uh, energy, utilizes energy, and turns it into human performance. Program design and progression. And without belaboring them, I'm sure you can see them all here, nutrition, medical terminology, et cetera. So it's very comprehensive in the academic domains that we cover, preparing an individual well to enter the field and have critical and deductive thinking skills. The practical skills, the hands-on training modules, they are three Sundays. And we cover everything from core to client assessment, range of motion, stretching, upper extremity and lower extremity exercise. And then on the third lab, we review everything that we had taught in lab one and lab two. So we really like to reinforce the practical skill, the hands-on aspect of the learning portion. And then our exam. Uh, the exam is offered on November 24th. It is uh, somewhere around two and a half hours, to my understanding. It is offered right at Hofstra University, right on the on campus, typically in the same room that you've spent your had had your whole entire educational um, experience in. And we are having an uh, information session, uh, one that's quite a bit more comprehensive than what we're talking to you about tonight, um, this Sunday at 10 a.m. And that will be over at Hofstra University at Berlin Hall. Some of you are asking about the cost and what you need to get, if anything, to participate. Well, the personal trainer course fee includes the following. We provide you with all your course materials, all your review classes, registration for your exam is included, and that is $975. For those people who do not have an anatomy background from college or university, or do not have a current certification, that's another NCCA certification, um, you're required to take the prerequisite anatomy. And that is offered both live and online. So you have an option there um, as well. And certainly if um, you're interested in registering for the course, you can call the number as you see here, the 463-7600 number. And if you'd like to register or get even some more information, you might have some more questions or I'd like to get a better understanding of what the experience is like, you can go to the AAPT website, which is aapt.org, and you can just click on the link that says CPTEFS. That stands for Certified Personal Trainer Exercise Fitness Specialist. And if you scroll down, you'll see this on your screen, and you can click right there to register. And if you're interested in attending our open house, our information session this Sunday, you can certainly do that by just calling the 516 number there and asking, uh, well, you won't even have to ask for it. That's Kathy's, uh, Kathy Montalbano. She'd be happy to uh, register you. Um, our next program, uh, there's a question here I'd like to get to. Um, actually, there's a few. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, the next program after the fall We'll start sometime in February, late February, early March. We run our course three times a year, and um, that's, that's about the most we can offer it due to the length of time that the course runs. So the next one would start um, sometime February, early March. And let me just see here. Okay, um, Vince and I, we have a few questions. Sure. 
Um, but before before I uh, ask you the questions, I just want to point out that we have another option for the anatomy course, which is full, a fully online course that must be completed between September 23rd and October 10th. And it's the same price, $295. So that's a possibility also. Right, absolutely. Um, OK, so someone's asking about it, 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 they looked at, I guess, the, the timing, and they're saying, is it possible to complete the entire program in six weeks? Well, the course is on a very specific set schedule. Um, if you go to the website, you'll actually be able to see um, what the dates and times are of the course. So it's a set schedule, and absolutely, it's, it's designed that over that time period, we go from the very beginning to the very end, and we cover all the information specific to that, those modules that we um, outline. So absolutely, there's no doubt about it. And, and that's, that's kind of how it's run for the past 18 years. Absolutely, you definitely can complete it. And um, I think two related questions. One, do you help with job placement? And two, do gyms hire AAPT trainers? Yeah. So, great questions, and we do not do job placement. Um, what we do is work with the organizations uh, here in New York State to provide them access to you to our certificates by any time we get a call saying, "Hey, we'd like to hire some AAPT trainers. How do we go about that?" So, what we do is you can take a look at our website. You can start even on our home page if you scroll down to the bottom. You'd actually see um, some of the organizations that hire AAPT trainers. Um, let me give you a look at that. So if you scroll down here, you guys you can see my screen? Yep. For job opportunities? Yes. Okay. So here we go. Um, right here, if you take a look at that, and you scroll up to the top here, and we go to trainer resources and employment opportunities, you can absolutely see that we have some a significant amount of organizations looking for personal trainers, AAP trainers. You have some of the largest, largest organizations in the country um, hiring our trainers. For sure, um, we do everything we can to meet the expectations of those organizations, and that's why um, they do promote, want us to promote their employment opportunities uh, on our site. We post it on our Facebook. We do direct email to all of our certificates. Once an organization says, hey, we're looking to hire some trainers, we make sure that our certificates are emailed immediately. Um, through our through AAPT and informed about the employment opportunity. So the opportunities are there. In fact, on the eleventh night of class, we usually bring in a guest speaker from one of the organizations, be it a New York Sports Club in LA, Fitness, Equinox, a large organization that speaks to our students about employment opportunities within their organization. Um, and discusses some of the benefits that are associated with working with those organizations so that if our certificates, once certified, decide to go apply for a job at these organizations, A, they have a contact, and B, if they choose to look at other facilities and other um, fitness organizations, they have something to compare and contrast what in, in the employment um, benefits would be and what one club has to offer over another. So. We do our best to help out with that. OK, a question. Do we learn to develop routines that are specific to certain sports, for example, routines that we, would be applied to soccer players, et cetera? Well, no. The answer to that is no. Um, what you do learn is you, need, you will learn. See, we don't teach routines, and we don't teach one way of doing things. What we're going to teach is how to think about what to do with that specific 
athlete. So if you're talking about soccer, you will know that that is considered an anaerobic sport. You'll know that the energy system that's used in that sport is the one that you're going to want to train. And then you're going to know what type of exercises, what duration of exercise, what frequency of exercise would actually stimulate that athlete's systems to provide an enhanced performance. So it really comes down to understanding the science and the physiology of the person, a person, and then what it is that they are going to do. We don't look at what they do and then try to create a program because programs aren't for everybody. And we teach our certificates to look at individuals and how they're going to progress that individual to improve performance. So when I say no, um, we don't say, well, here's how you train for soccer. We say, okay, what type of sport is soccer? Is it aerobic or anaerobic? Is it short burst, high burst, uh, short duration, high energy, long duration, low energy? And when we come up with those answers, then we better know how to start to create a program to fit that individual's needs. And I, I would think also, Vincent, that you would want to know what the age of the soccer player is. There, we can go on for hours here. And, yep, you're, you're talking about exercise history, age, med, uh, med, medical history, pharmacological history, um, orthopedic history, neurological history, age, everything is taken into consideration because, you know, it is called personal training, right? So we're, we're looking at an individual, whether we work with 10 individuals, we need to know each one of them first before we start working with all 10 of them to make this safe, effective, and efficient. Um, absolutely, you're 100% right about that. Okay, uh, qu quick question. I think you covered this, but what is the procedure for taking the exam? Is it done with you at Hofstra? Yeah. Um, it, not done with me. Uh, fortunately, I'm on the educational side of this uh, organization and don't have anything to do with the testing. But what I do know about the testing, yes, it is provided at Hofstra. We, AAPT provides it right in, uh, as I said earlier, the classroom that typically the classroom that you um, are, would be taking the course in would be the same classroom that you'd be taking your exam. Your exam, I do know, and this information is posted online, is a multiple choice exam. Uh, there is no written essay and there is no formal practical. There is a written practical, meaning that there are examples of an individual doing an exercise um, and the, certificate, the candidate must be able to identify is the exercise being performed correctly or there, what are the risk factors associated with it. So it is comprehensive in nature. It is offered right at Hofstra University. Okay, there's a question about uh, do I need the prerequisite course if I have 20 years bodybuilding and former strength um, coaching Hofstra men's basketball? Yes, if you haven't had a college level anatomy course or have, do not have a current NCCA accredited certification, absolutely. Okay, question, is there a cap on the number of students that are allowed during each semester? Yes, and if, if you've been recommended to the course, you'll know this to be the truth. Uh, most of the people who are taking our course, at least for the past seven years or so, um, a lot of our students come by referral, and um, we do cap our course at 52 students each semester. Absolutely. And. I, I can't remember the last time we didn't hit, you know, the cap. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, we typically have a waiting list um, two weeks before the course even starts yeah. for people yeah. to get in. Um, I, I say that proudly, um, and, and there's no urgency here for someone to register if, if they feel that, you know, that might be a myth. But the truth and the reality of it is, um, the course has a strong reputation. Um, we're proud of that. And the people who are serious about getting a serious education, um, they're going to be there. And we will fill up the course. 
Okay, um, someone says I'm in college now taking undergrad courses for physical therapy. I'd really like to register for October, but I'm worried that the workload will be too heavy. Well, I wish I could answer that for you and, and just to, you know, assure you that it wouldn't be, uh, but that would be misleading. I think that, you know, for that person, if you're feeling like your workload right now wouldn't permit you to focus on anything else, you're, you're probably right. But I also think that this course is right in line with what it is you're studying and might be real beneficial um, for you at this point or maybe in the near future. So if you're considering it, um, maybe you can come down to our information session this weekend. We can show you the textbook that we use and show you the information that um, we're going to be sharing with you and you can better make a decision. But um, that's something you have to be comfortable with because we certainly want people at the course who are able to be there, assimilate the information, uh, and not feel overwhelmed by it. Okay. Well, one last question, Vincent, and then we will we will end. Um, sure. If if someone cannot take the class now uh, and they want to take it in February, can they register now? And I will answer that because uh, I'm actually as we speak, working on the spring bulletin. Um, it's not up yet for registration, but it will be within the next couple of weeks. Yep, excellent. That's excellent. So, yeah, as soon as, our, as soon as our course typically starts, registration opens for the next course. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, all right, well, thank you very much, Vincent. Uh, as yep. always, you've been, uh, you've been terrific, very in informational course. Um, webinar and um, I encourage you to go to the the open house the information session this Sunday uh, it's really will answer all your questions and we look forward to seeing you in the course thank you very much everybody and thank you very much everybody have a great night thank you